So you're sitting at a coffee shop and you want to get some work done. Everyone else is also working, so you assume everything's fine, it's just a normal day, so you log into the public Wi-Fi. You connect and you're able to browse the internet like normal and get some stuff done. However, what you don't realize is that in that exact same coffee shop, somebody else is also at work, except their work is to capture your precious, precious, precious information. When you log into your Instagram account, they're able to steal the credentials that you use to log in and log in as you. When you log into your bank account, you're literally giving them your username and your password and subsequently your money. When you send an email, they're able to manipulate the data in that email and forward it with a message that you did not send. They're doing this using a Wi-Fi pineapple. In using this, they're able to trick your computer into logging into a fake or rogue access point and create fake clones of websites that they know that you're going to be logging into like Instagram or let's say Bank of America or something else. So what the heck is a Wi-Fi pineapple and how are they able to do this? Well, believe it or not, this is a Wi-Fi pineapple. It is this small. It can fit in, I mean, literally in a pocket if you have a big pocket and they can plug it into their laptop and go to work. The attack that they performed is known as an evil twin attack or whenever they create a twin to a public Wi-Fi network that they know that you're going to log into. And once you join that Wi-Fi network, they have you. They'll allow you to access different websites on the internet, but if they want, they can also trick you into logging into clones of websites that you would log into otherwise. But all of this is surprisingly easy to do. It's surprisingly easy to procure one of these, and it's surprisingly easy to use one of those. And to prove that, I'm gonna show you. I'm not only gonna show you how to use a pineapple like this, but I'm gonna use it on the Mac that I use to edit these videos. It's a similar kind of Mac that you probably use, and it's really not that much different from any Windows machine, except it is better, but we're not gonna talk about that. And we're gonna talk about all of that as soon as you hit that like button. Go ahead, I'm waiting. So anyway, let's talk a bit more about this. This is a Wi-Fi pineapple, and you can get one at Hack5 for around $100. If you're an ethical hacker or a penetration tester, or you're interested in becoming one, you should absolutely think about getting one so you can test it out in your lab. And actually, I have an affiliate link down in the description of this video, so feel free to use that in a portion of that money actually goes to support this channel, so I appreciate it. So what is this little thing? You're able to create an evil twin of a Wi-Fi network that you can trick machines into joining. When on a penetration test or trying to gain an initial footprint on a security audit, this will basically help you to harvest credentials and basically gain user information that it otherwise may be slightly difficult to do. And you can do that without having to join the target network. All I have to do is set this up and then wait for one of the targets to inadvertently join the network thinking that they're joining the right network. Now I'm gonna say this up front, only use this and other hacking techniques for ethical and legal purposes only. Again, we're talking about this openly because we want more security folks in the industry and we want more ethical security folks in the industry. So don't be a bad person, only use this for good. And with that, let's keep going. So how do you set one of these up? First, you're gonna plug it into your computer and it will power up. Of course, give it some time to boot up first. And then it's as easy as following the prompts that it gives you. You will eventually land on this menu. From here, you can do everything from launch a campaign to creating custom websites. In this case, whoever your target is for a penetration test or yourself. It's yourself if you're using this for a home lab. In our story at the beginning of the video, this is actually where the attacker would set up clones of the different websites that they know that you will probably log into, like Facebook or YouTube or Bank of America. And then whenever you log in, instead of those credentials, being passed to the actual web server that you're trying to log into, it's passed straight to the attacker and now they'll have your login credentials. Some unsuspecting people may just go about trying to log in, passing information to the attacker without realizing that they're under attack. They might think that some of the delays and the responses from the web server might just be due to latency and frankly just a sluggish public Wi-Fi network and not an attacker. This scenario plays out in a much worse way whenever we're not talking about this happening in a coffee shop but instead at a convention center or a corporate lobby. Then they're not just capturing things like social media credentials, they could be capturing more sensitive information and proprietary data. So that might all sound pretty frightening, but if you're not in the IT or the security space, it might seem very weird that I'm just posting this video on YouTube and showing how easy it is. After all, if we don't want people to be doing this, then why should we show them that it's actually easy for them to commit crimes like this? Well, first it's to illustrate even to you the low barrier of entry that criminals have when performing
timing these attacks and how it can absolutely happen to you if you're not careful. Second, there's an entire niche in cybersecurity that's actually built around emulating adversary actions to audit security and try to make in general security better. And in routinely doing this and in making the information on these attacks publicly available, we're not only able to get more people in the industry and interested in the industry, we're also able to raise awareness that a lot of these attacks are actually pretty easy to pull off as well as the defenses that you can use to stop some of these attacks. So on that note, how can you defend yourself from rogue APs? Well, the simplest and easiest answer is to simply not log into public Wi-Fi. If you're able to use your phone or a hotspot, absolutely do that because you know that that is something that you can trust. If you don't have that capability, then just wait to perform any actions or work until you're back to a Wi-Fi network that you know you can trust, like your home network or company network. In either case, you should probably be using a VPN to encrypt the traffic. In our example earlier, the attacker created fake login pages. And so that's one reason why we actually choose to avoid fresh login pages whenever we're on public Wi-Fi. And we only log in whenever we're completely confident in the security and confidentiality of our connections. So should you use public Wi-Fi? No, ab absolutely not, you should not. Either use a hotspot or wait to take care of your tasks whenever you're home. In either case, try to use a VPN for added security. And you know what would also be a huge help to your security, even in the event that you do get duped by an attacker and you log into a fake website, using multi-factor authentication. That way, even if the attacker tries to log in with your credentials, they will still be prompted for that extra code. And, and unless they've managed to break that, then you'll know that someone's logging into your account and you can put a stop to that. That is a very nice added layer of security to keep you safe. So with all that, make sure that you leave a comment saying that public Wi-Fi stinks and leave a like on this video. Also, if you didn't know that Kaspersky was added to the national security blacklist, then you should probably watch this video because that might have some information that you should be aware of. With all that, I will see you all next time. Bye.